20 surefire rules of investing that can make you money 5, 10, 50 years in the future as long as you can apply them correctly. There's a reason why some of the best investors share their principles through video and books. That's because the methods are timeless and have been practiced for thousands of years. The ancient Egyptians used taxes and were one of the first civilizations to introduce home ownership. The Amsterdam Stock Exchange was the first ever to issue a stock for the Dutch East India Co. in 1602, whose business was to conquer trade routes, in particular trading spices, silk, and silver. These investing principles I'm going to share with you can be used over and over again, and this video is everyone's staple to go back to and be reminded how to invest forever. This isn't financial advice, but let's get into it. Hack number one, the money isn't made in the buy or sell, it's made in the wait. We only invest with money that we'll never need, therefore we can wait forever. Pretend whenever you invest, you couldn't sell for 20 years. You'll start thinking much more long-term rather than picking stocks on short-term emotion. Because as this saying comes from Munger and Buffett, we only make money when we wait due to the compounding process rather than the two anchor points that we exchange money. Hack number two, if you buy with the intention to sell, you're not investing, you're trading. If your whole motive to invest is to sell, then you're already going in with the wrong mindset. Any business in its infancy goes through a stage where it's making little to no money, and the idea that in the long run it will pay off big time keeps us investing in this company. But if you go into this company intending to sell, you'll look for every reason to do so. It's the same thing as if you're dating a girl. Don't search for the red flag or reason to get rid of her because you'll manifest doing that exact thing. But at the same time, if you notice an issue with a stock or a girl, then it might be time to sell. Just let those bigger issues arise rather than searching for them. Hack number three, the stock market transfers money from the impatient to the patient. I've included a lot of Buffettisms in this video and this one might just be my favorite one. And so the stock market puts money in the pocket of the patient and takes it out of the impatient. I think it's a great outlook on life. Look at Jeff Bezos who saw Amazon fall 97% in the dot-com bubble and those who were impatient sold out of there as quick as possible. But the patient ones who put their trust in a great company and its vision got the exponential returns and no one saw it just like Bezos, who at some points became the richest man in the world. So realize that short-term corrections shouldn't leave you fearful because great investments that you've heavily researched do bounce back. Hack number four, money loves speed, but wealth loves time. The reason why Warren Buffett is so notoriously wealthy is because of his ability to take advantage of the compound effect. At 30, he hit his first million. At 55, he hit his first billion. And now at 92, he's worth over $100 billion. Money loves speed because any business can quickly attract customers and sell those items on a long-term basis and then generate a very profitable income stream. But by investing on a long enough time horizon without interruptions to avoid tax implications, as an investor, it becomes very compelling. Most say, however, why invest if it's only going to make me rich when I'm 60? And this is a large subject of people who just never get rich nor wealthy. Hack number five, money flows to attention and focus. Those who can apply their focus onto one task and don't spread themselves out too thin by working two jobs, trying to be an NBA star, trying to play in a band, trying to start a dropshipping business. It's too much, trust me, it won't work. You'll always be outmatched by someone who solely focuses their attention to one thing for 12 hours a day, seven days a week. Hack number six, riches are made by taking a lot of risk with little money. Riches are maintained by taking little risk with a lot of money. The rags to riches success stories are always so wholesome because you see someone come from absolutely nothing and become very affluent. But the way they did it was by becoming so dangerous that they had nothing to lose. But on the flip side, if you do have something to lose, it really becomes like the casino because the upside isn't as much if you've already established those riches that can compound into long-term wealth. Hack number seven, we think when we're gone, our money and legacy lives on when in fact it doesn't. When you buy a piece of land, you're like, okay, cool, I can live on it for a couple of decades and then pass it down for further generations. But how come no one we know has any land owned by our great grandparents, for instance? It's because all the wealth you've attained over your lifetime has lost three generations down the track. And if you think some great business you'll start up that will leave a massive impact on the world will cause people to remember you, trust me, it won't. For example, in 1990, just 33 years ago, the biggest company in the world was Nippon Telegraph and Telephone. I've never even heard of that company, that was only 30 years ago. In fact, that's why most people can't even name three historic figures before the birth of Christ because no one really cares. So sorry, but what makes you special? Hack number eight is ignore money advice from poor people. Alex and Rosie really inspired this idea into me, which is don't take money advice from people poorer than you want to be. Now, depending on how successful your parents are, it may or may not be affected to listen to them. This is why the quote unquote rich kids often get better jobs and make more money. Yes, because of the helpful circumstances that their parents gave them, but also because of the values and lessons that were passed down to them. But once we surpass our parents monetarily, if that's a variable you want to measure, they can no longer help us and we have to seek other mentors. It's not just with business. If you're a junior engineer, you want to spend as much time with the person highest up the pecking order because the less they teach will be worth the most. Hack number nine, you stay poor until you learn the lessons poverty teaches. 
People are forced into poverty sometimes from the system, their parents, or lack of education when they're young, but most don't actively take upon the lessons that are taught during poverty and reach prosperity because of it. The basics include saving, learning how to invest, gaining skills that can make a higher income, and avoiding addiction, especially ones that cost a lot. And then growing from periods of substandard living will take you very far, but we need to learn money at just a basic level, which 70% of people don't even do, but I know you can. Hack number 10, think once before you invest, think twice before you spend. Investing by definition is putting your money to something in order to get some sort of return. This can be stocks, cryptos, real estate skills, whatever. But the point is we only need to think once in order to be increasingly well off in the future. At tracking from that, we need to think twice before we spend money on a subscription service, buying coffee versus making one at home, are the thoughts we must have because when we spend money, we never get it back. Hack 11, if you're good at it, keep doing it. Seems obvious, but let me break it down. Invest based on your knowledge base. If you're a real estate agent and know a lot about housing, then invest heaviest in this asset class for your personal portfolio. If you want to diversify in the stock market, crypto, ETFs, then you can do that, but focus on what you're best at. People say don't put all your eggs in one basket, but I perceive it this way. If you're really, really good at basketball and can see yourself doing it professionally, then why play football? Just focus on basketball because it's what you're best at. Pretty obvious, I thought. Hack number 12, always prepare an emergency fund. It doesn't matter if you're super rich or dead broke, every single person needs an emergency fund. This is essentially a safe haven of money that you have in case shit hits the fan. Maybe a car breaks down, maybe you have a major health crisis, maybe you lose your job, whatever happens, you need to be prepared. You need to have this buffer in case you don't make any income for a prolonged period of time, plus you still have to pay for your expenses. So ideally, take your expenses for a month and maybe two, three, five thousand dollars and times that by the amount of months of safety you feel you'd be comfortable on. So if you want six months of safety times your monthly expenses by six, that's your safety net. Hack 13, if you feel FOMO, pause. It's hard for a lot of people to notice the effects of FOMO or fear of missing out when they're in the moment. I had this when I started investing in crypto about two years ago. I saw the massive uptick and then the massive downturn last year. Famously, a dot-com bubble saw the meteoric rise of internet stocks until the bubble burst. So make sure whenever you're investing, do your due diligence, make sure you're investing logically, not emotionally. And if you do feel as euphoric rises and you want to double down, just pause and reevaluate. Hack number 14, companies take time to readjust but move quicker than you can imagine. We talk about those people who become overnight successes, but we don't talk about the five to 10 years of backlogged hard effort that took to be that overnight success. And this is the exact same thing with investing. We may find an intriguing company, invest heavily, and then it just doesn't move for five years. Then all of a sudden we'll have a two year rise where it jumps 500%. Peter Lynch speaks heavily on this idea because the most money you can lose in the stock market isn't by investing in a bad company, by investing in a fantastic company, but selling too early. From memory, he bought Walmart stock in the 70s, saw a massive rise, and then sold. The company then went on to 50x from there. That's a lot more than losing money investing in IBM. Hack number 15 is to think in terms of time horizon, not rate of return. If you're working on a business or passion project, think how can I double my following, my skill set, my revenue in six months, two years, a decade. The time frame depends on the original measurement, but don't think I need to increase 10% this year because it doesn't make sense logically. Think double in this amount of time rather than in this time make percentage return. Hack number 16 is to know your saving percentage. A lot of people set their savings goals as a figure in the bank, but when saving money, look at your annual salary and the percentage of that saved instead. If you're making 300K, and only saving $40,000 instead of the person making 60k and saving 30,000 of that. Although the dollar amount is less, the person who's saving more money in comparison to their salary will be more inclined to save when their salary goes up. Whilst on the other hand, the person who's the big spender will keep spending as their salary rises. The general consensus in the personal finance space is to save about 30% of your income and then invest it. Although it's very dependent on the circumstance, for the vast majority of people, this is perfectly fine. Hack number 17, price is what you pay, value is what you get. This is slightly confusing at the start, but picture it like this. You want a cool new phone, it has all the right specs, it's the right size, it has all the cool features, but it's $1,500. It's perceived value is $1,500, it's relative value is it's price against other competitors, and it's intrinsic value is what you actually get out of the phone. So the specs, the size, the features. So if the phone next day went on sale for $1,300 and you know what the absolute value is and you see it being worth the price, then of course you'd buy it. Treat this the same as an investment. It doesn't matter what the price is, it's the value you get from it. And the bigger the gap between the perceived value and the absolute value, the more exponential returns you'll get in the future. Act number 18, and this is one of my favorite ones. If you cannot control your emotions, you cannot control your money. If you really break it down to its core, your ability to make and spend money all comes down to the emotions you face. A lot of people buy lavish items due to impulse decisions such as Gucci bags, you know, Dior clothes. I don't know, I don't buy this stuff to be honest. Maybe a fancy watch, that's about it.
On the flip side, one's ability to make money also comes down to their emotions. Some people just don't like working at a young age, so compared to the peers, they don't have as much money. Same as studying, if you're not working hard and constantly learning, in the long run, you won't make a high income when you're 30, 40, 50. And by far my favorite is people who start a business or side hustle, and in the short term, in the infancy of the business, make no money for years, but then in the long term, it makes exponentially more. The emotions will say it's not worth it, it's too hard, it doesn't make any money. But the select few go through the pain and pressure to get the treasure. So controlling these emotions, especially with purchases, goes a long way into long-term wealth. Hack 9 and if you buy things you want, soon you need to sell the things you need. It's more common you think that these small purchases like coffee or lunch at work leaves a big hole in your wallet. And when a big unexpected purchase comes up in the future, people are forced to sell the things they need in order to make up for it. Don't be this person. Hack number 20 is to start now. Actually, the biggest barrier for every investor is to just get started. And there's no perfect time to get in because no one knows the future. It's best to start now because then you at least have a vested interest and can pay attention every single day of the market. And then you can keep adding to your investment from there. Investments can go up and down the short term, but at least for stocks and real estate, over the long term, such as decades, it consistently goes up. I just want to say before the video ends that investing is just applied human psychology. As you read between the lines of every single one of the hacks I've listed, nearly all of them just come down to human psychology and you can apply a lot of these tips and tricks to your life. And just like life, investing has its ups and downs. But by zooming out and looking over the long term, it's really beautiful and you shouldn't be scared of it. If you like my content, check out some of my other videos, share with a friend if you think this was worth for them to watch. Check out my socials below. But anyway, guys, hang out.